Let's get to the news and jokes. Well, guys, today President Trump took a break from his busy schedule of retweeting Randy Quaid and carried out the presidential tradition of pardoning a turkey. Here's the big moment between Trump and a turkey named Corn. Corn, I hereby grant you a full pardon. Thank you, Corn. Yeah, that's right. The bird needed to be pardoned after it was let down by its bumbling lawyer, Rooster Giuliani. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the good news is the turkey was pardoned. The bad news is Trump didn't wear a mask, so he's a goner anyway. <laughs> but I hope everyone else wore a mask, because it's got to be embarrassing if your contact tracing leads back to a turkey pardon. I saw that people could go online and vote for the turkey they wanted pardoned, corn or cob. <laughs> Meanwhile, turns out corn might have won because the vote was rigged by Hugo Chavez. <laughs> but this is nice. I heard that before the ceremony, corn and cob stayed at the Willard Hotel. Take a look at this. Yeah. As if the hotel industry wasn't going through enough during COVID. Now they got to deal with this two turkeys in the suite. <laughs> Yeah, while well, you've been stuck in your studio apartment for nine months, Corn and Cobb have been demolishing the minibar and renting movies at the Willard Hotel. <laughs> That's right, the turkeys have been staying at the hotel, although it was sad when they saw a feather pillow and yelled, look what they did to Steve. <laughs> Some more news about the president. I heard that he's planning to move to Florida, and a certain group of people are being asked if they might want to go with him. Watch this. Members of the President's Secret Service detail have gotten an offer from the Secret Service headquarters asking if they would like to be permanently moved to Mar-a-Lago with the soon-to-be ex-president, Donald Trump. Yeah, when Trump asked who wants to go to Florida with him, the agents broke the Guinness World Record for the longest silence in history. <laughs> Seriously, imagine going from protecting the White House to the omelet bar is secure. <laughs> Repeat, the omelet bar is secure. <laughs> Meanwhile, down at Mar-a-Lago, I read that they're already renovating Trump and Melania's living quarters. And this is nice to make Trump feel better. They're redoing every room to look like the White House. <laughs> Trump's actually getting the work done at a good price because they're going to grab all the unused lumber from the border wall. <laughs> so congrats to the Trumps and whichever bank repossesses that property. Well, this is a big story. President-elect Biden has started naming key members of his cabinet. Check it out. President-elect Joe Biden beginning to build out his cabinet with a diverse group, including Janet Yellen for Treasury Secretary and former Secretary of State John Kerry to serve as a special envoy on the climate crisis. Yeah, Janet Yellen and John Kerry. Whoa, baby, get pumped! <laughs> Meanwhile, when I saw those people, I was like, wait, none of them have been on a game show? Looking at Biden's cabinet versus Trump's is basically like comparing the White House to Animal House. <laughs> Listen to this. Joe Biden announced his picks for his presidential cabinet this week, and this is cool. We actually got our hands on the voicemails Biden left for his cabinet members, telling them the good news. The first one is for Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. Take a listen. What's up, Skip? Just calling to let you know you're going to be my Secretary of State. Hey, remember the days when you could marry the secretary? You'd go, hey, missy, I have an appointment to see the boss man, but now I'm wondering if I could take you to the egg cream stand. <laughs> this next voicemail is for Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas. Hey, Alejandro, I need you to keep our country safe from the bad guys like teeny boppers who smash your mailbox with a bat from a backseat of a Winnebago or Polish guys at the YMCA who slap your back when you're wearing a wet T-shirt. <laughs> and finally, this voicemail is for the new Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen. God, how many of these do I have left? Oh, I'm on. Janet Yellen? You'd be responsible for deciding which money is best. I'm partial to the nickel because it's given us so many classic games. Roll the nickel down the hill, hop over the nickel, tease the nickel, taste the nickel. This mailbox is now full. Goodbye. Yeah, nice, yes. Hop over the nickel. That was a, one of my favorite games. Uh, some TV news. I saw that The Queen's Gambit just became the most watched scripted limited series on Netflix. It's amazing. 
All it took was closing every bar, gym, and restaurant in America to get people to care about chess. And thanks to the Queen's Gambit, sales of chess sets are way up. Right now, elves in Santa's workshop are like, is this some kind of joke? What's a chess set? The most popular games are puzzles and chess. So get ready for the hottest Christmas of 1927. <laughs> It'd be weird when kids are like, is it a chess set? No, oh, it's just a PS5. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Santa. It reminds me of when the Great, Great British Baking Show debuted on Netflix and sales of type 2 diabetes medication skyrocketed. <laughs> reminds me of that. Uh, get this, I heard that a lot of uh, Peloton customers are upset because their orders have been delayed for months. Yep, right now, customers are like, how am I supposed to regret buying this thing if it never comes? <laughs> you can tell Peloton is getting desperate. Today, they mailed people a Schwinn with a nine inch TV duct taped to it. <laughs> Hey guys, the news can sometimes be pretty heavy, so I thought I'd take a second to focus in a poetic way on some of the news stories that you might have missed that are a bit lighter. You'll see what I mean. It's time for In Lighter News. In lighter news. Roses are red, violets are symmetric. Fifteen Philadelphia mobsters indicted, including Tony Meatballs and Joey Electric. <laughs> Roses are red. Violets are plants. Brawl at Colorado In N Out ends with customer losing his pants. <laughs> Roses are red, violets have grace. Martial artist removes 68 bottle caps in one minute using his face. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are glum. Fed up driver makes his son stand in six foot pothole to prove how huge it's become. And finally, roses are red, violets are daft. Two pilots under investigation for drawing gigantic penis with aircraft. <laughs> and finally, here's some news from overseas. Queen Elizabeth just launched her own brand of gin. Yeah, I'm excited about this because I think we're a month away from the Queen launching her own line of vape pens. You guys, last night after our show, we all went down, me and the Roots, or the Roots and I, uh, went down to, uh, me and the Roots, right? Went down to Macy's to uh, rehearse our performance in the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yeah, uh, yeah it was really fun. Um, obviously socially distanced, safe and all that. But we didn't know if we were going to do a parade this year or not or anything. We yeah. actually didn't know. But then we got the uh, call from NBC. They're like, hey, would you like to uh, be part of it? And how do you say no to that? So we're like, yeah, let's do it. Uh, we got to show up. So uh, I was like, are we going to be on a float? Because usually we're on a, a muffin or something. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, we've been on a guitar. Guitar. Yeah. Uh, a muffin. Sesame Street. Yeah, Which one? What was the Sesame, Sesame Street? Street. Oh, yeah, Sesame Street. We were in like a house with those guys. Yeah. Were we on a train before? I think we were the first year we were on a train. Yeah. Yeah, we were on a train. But I, so anyways, I said, what float? They said, no float. You guys, oh. are, you guys are dancing in the street. And I go, all right, cool. I got you. So uh, we're going to be out there on the street uh, doing it up. It's going to be fun. It's all going down Thanksgiving morning. Um, we, we, I asked around. I found out how they're doing, they're doing some of the balloons, I think. They're, I think they're just going around Macy's in, in and out of the revolving door. <laughs> <laughs> With the balloon? With a giant balloon, yeah. They're <laughs> shoving it through. They go, what is that? And they go, just trust me, it's Snoopy. <laughs> <laughs> Just try, we couldn't blow it up, but trust me, that's, that's Snoopy and that's, uh, yeah. Uh, but no, they have some cool ideas and they're going to do something different. It's just, it, it, it's exciting because you can't, you can't not do the parade. You got to do the parade. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going down and we'll be there. They have all sorts of fun performances. Uh, I heard uh, the Hamilton, I heard. I heard Mean Girls. Uh, got to have your Rockettes. Yeah. I, I think that's what's going to, like, Bring it, bring it here to me, I. That's <laughs> what they say. It, you know, it brings out the Irish brogue. Yeah, man. You know. It's cool. And mine, it brings mine too. Yeah. And what what happens? What, what happens when your Irish voice comes out? What does it sound like there? I start to sound like Popeye. I go 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 go. Oh yeah, yeah. He will not be there this year, Popeye. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> They'll wheel him out through the revolving door. They go. That's Popeye. Trust me. Uh, 
But that's all going down. It was so exciting to see everybody. Yeah, hopefully the Rockettes. That's going to be the one. No. That's going to be cool. But uh, obviously hosted by uh, uh, Savannah, I'm assuming Al and Hoda. Uh, but anyways, the Thanksgiving Day Parade is just so special to us. And it's going to happen. Rain or shine, we're going to be there. we got to be there for you guys. So keep your TVs on, NBC, because... Uh, Thanksgiving show, uh, our Thanksgiving show, we're doing a brand new show for you guys, is giant that night. So after the big game, we have Jerry Seinfeld on our show. And we have talk and a performance from Bad Bunny. So come on, set your DVR, set your TiVos, record the Tonight Show this Thursday. It's going to be fun. But first, we have a great show for you tonight. From Morning Joe on MSNBC, Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski are here. And Joe wrote the new book, Saving Freedom, which is out today. Also, you can see him in the new film, Uncle Frank, on Amazon Prime Video. Paul Bettany is here. And we got great music, as we always do, from Internet Money, featuring Gunna, Don Tolliver, and Nav. And on and on, uh, I said, and it's on.